In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, create a continuous data histogram, a frequency histogram, and a relative frequency histogram using StatCrunch. And the data set I'm using is this one. It's the uh, time between eruptions at the Old Faithful Geyser in Wyoming. And here are the sources. Uh, park cur a park curator at, uh, at I guess, Yellowstone Park. Um, we've got 45 observations in our data set, and you can either write these down, pause the video and write them down, or I have a, a Google Sheets, uh, a Google spreadsheet where you can go to and copy and paste, and I have a bit.ly link that you can use to get there. So let's go over and open StatCrunch first. I'm accessing StatCrunch through MyLabs Plus, or MyStatLab. I've logged in. Click the StatCrunch link on the left-hand side, and that's going to give me a link to open the to go to the StatCrunch website. So there's the link that says visit the StatCrunch website. Click on that, and then I get an option to open StatCrunch here. I'll open StatCrunch and I need some data. So I'm going to go, I've got a, a spreadsheet, an online spreadsheet uh, where I can get the data from. So I'm going to open a window for that. So I have a bit.ly where you can go get the data from if you want to copy and paste it in. So I'll go bit and actually it's this one right here. Uh, bit.ly slash R Dilling, R D I L L I N G underscore capital O F E T. It has to be capital O F E T and then lowercase data. So this is Old Faithful Eruption Time data. I'll hit enter. And this will be a read only when you open it. I've got access to it. And so here's the data. There should be 45 numbers. Uh, it says 46 because I have actually left a gap here. So I'm going to click on here, click on the first number, scroll down, and then press the shift key and hold the shift key down, and then click on the bottom number. So that highlights all of it. And then I'm going to right click and go copy. So now I've copied the data. And so now I'm going to go back to my stat crunch window. And for my StatCrunch window, I'll, I'll uh, just hit Control V to paste it in. And there should be, if I scroll down here, there should be exactly 45 numbers because that's uh, so we got 45 numbers here because uh, that's how many observations there are in the data set. All right, so now that I've got my data in here, I'm going to build a histogram. It's very similar to a discrete data histogram, except we're going to set the class width how we want it to be. So I'm going to use an existing example uh, to set what my lower class limit is and what my uh, class width is going to be. So here's the data set again. If you look closely, you'll see uh, 672 is the smallest value and 738 is the largest value. Uh, right here, 738. So what I want to do is I'm going to start my first class somewhere at or below 672. So it's nice to just round that down to 670. So I'm going to use my lower class limit of 670, and I'll go. I'll have enough classes so that uh, 738 will fit in my last class. So if we built a frequency table, this is what it would look like. Um, I'm going to use a class with the 5, so I'm going to start with a lower class limit in my first class here of 670, and notice the, cl the classes are going up by 5, that means there's a class with the 5, and ultimately my last class is going to go from 735 to 739 because my largest data value is 738. And so if you actually go through that list, you can tally them up and then come up with the frequencies. And notice we have some empty classes in the middle, we need to keep those empty classes because otherwise the graph will be misleading. We need to show every class between 670 and 735. So we need to use all of those. 
and here's relative frequencies, but we're just going to have uh, StatCrunch calculate it, calculate that. So this is just to show uh, what the range of numbers I need. I don't actually have to calculate this or set it up on StatCrunch. In fact, StatCrunch won't let you build a frequency histogram or a relative frequency histogram from a frequency table like this. It will require you to use the raw data. That's why we had to paste it in. So now I'm going to go back to StatCrunch and say I want to use a lower class limit of 670 and a class width of 5. It's not a class width of 4. It's not the difference between these two numbers. It's the difference how much I'm going up on the side each time. 670 to 675, so on and so forth. So let's go back to StatCrunch now. So I'm back in StatCrunch and I'm just going to have it build a histogram by default and then we'll see if we need to adjust anything. So I'm going to come up here and click graph, choose histogram, and I'm going to pick variable one, that's column one here, that's where my data is. I'm not going to change any of this stuff right now, I'm just going to hit compute. And we'll take a look at the histogram and we'll see this goes from, looks like 670 up to 680, or 670 up to 679, 680 up to 689, 690, so on and so forth, all the way up to 740. Now I want a class, that gives me a class width of 10, so each of these bars, the numbers on the bottom are 10 wide, 700 to 710, 710 to 720, all those are a, width, a class width of 10. I want a class width of 5. So I need to change some things. I'm going to go back to Options, click the Options button, and click Edit. And so down here I'm going to have it start, I'm going to tell it to start at 670 and I'm going to use a class width of 5 and again I'm just going to leave everything for right now everything else, so I click uh, and it asks me for a maximum so my maximum is 740 because uh, all my data values are less than that so I hit OK and there it's done it with a class width of 5 so it goes 670 to 675, 675 to 680 so on and so forth. So this is a starts at 670, goes up to 740, and it's got a class width of 5. And now I want to save that off. So again, I have several options. If I click Options, if I click Save, that's actually going to save it to um, to on online for StatCrunch to, to get it later. But I want to save this as uh, I can save it both. I can copy the image and paste it into a Word document or I can download it as a PNG file. But the first thing I'm going to do is I want to put a title on this histogram and I want to change the x-axis label so it doesn't say var1 down here. So I'm going to show you what a completed one looks like and we'll use those um, that text for it. So here's a completed histogram. I think this was done in Excel. We have frequency on the y-axis. Time in seconds, I'm going to put that on the x-axis. And time between eruptions as the title. So I'm going to change the title to time between eruptions and the x-axis label to time and seconds in parentheses. So I'll go back to options, edit, and if I scroll down I can see I can change the title. Here's the title. I'll click in here and say time between eruptions and I want to change the x-axis label to be time and parentheses seconds and it'll give me a title, it'll label the x-axis for me actually I'm going to change that time so it's uppercase so I'll come back to options, edit scroll down here and I'll change that to an uppercase T And now let's uh, let's copy and paste this into a Word document, but then ultimately I'm going to save it. So here's options. To copy it and paste it into a Word document, I'll hit copy. And it tells me right-click the image below to copy it, so I'll right-click and choose copy image. And here I have a blank Word document. I'll just click inside of here. And I actually have to go up to paste and then choose Paste Special and I'm going to do it as a bitmap so I choose bitmap on here and hit OK 
and that'll paste my histogram into my Word document. So if I want to use it in a paper or something like that. But actually what I want to do is save it so I can use it later or I can email it to people or I can upload it somewhere. I'm going to save it as a PNG file. So let's go back to StatCrunch. I'm going to close this to get back to my histogram. I'm going to click Options and then I'm going to choose Download. And I'm going to name this, so I'll click in here before the dot and hit backspace. I'm going to call this freak. It's a frequency histogram, so I'll say freak histogram. I'm going to call it freak histogram 5 because I used a class with the 5. If I did a class with the 10, I'd call it freak histogram 10, or 15, I'd call it freak histogram 15, or 20, I can call it freak histogram 20. So I'll hit OK. That's going to bring up a little dialog so I can save it. So I'm going to save it as Freak Histogram 5. So I hit Save. I downloaded it. I have Chrome so I can click on this at the bottom to see if it opened correctly. And it looks good. So now I'm going to change it. I'm going to make this into a relative frequency histogram so I can download that. So I go back to Options edit and under type here right now it's a frequency histogram so I'm going to change that to relative frequency hit compute and it's going to ask me the same thing minimum and maximum and that's what I want all the labels everything looks good hit OK so there's my histogram and now it's a relative frequency histogram so it's got percents along the side here so I'm going to hit options I'm going to download it. And this one I'm going to call, because it's a relative frequency histogram, I'm going to go rel freak histogram 5. And OK. I save it to my computer. And it looks good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the class width to see what that looks like. So go back to Options, Edit. I'm going to change it back to a frequency histogram. And then down here under Width, I'm going to change this to a width of 20. And I'm going to hit Compute. So you see the histogram looks a little bit different because now I have very wide bars, 670 to 690, 690 to 710, so on and so forth because it's doing it every 20. So it looks, it still has that similar shape and actually I can do both of them side by side. So if I go graph, histogram, I'll do all the same stuff. So I'm going to start this at 670 and do the original and go up by 5. I won't put in all the labels and stuff like that. I just want to show you what they look like side by side. So slightly different looking histogram. So how you choose the class width has an effect on what it looks like and the story you want to tell with the histogram. So this is my one with a class width of 20. So I'm going to save that. So go to Options, Download. And this is a frequency histogram. So I'll say FREQ histogram. I'll call this 20, Freak Histogram 20, because I used a class width of 20. I'll save that. And then I can also make a relative frequency histogram, so I'll hit Options, Edit, and under Type, I'm going to change it and choose Relative Frequency. Hit Compute. Now it's a relative frequency histogram. And I'll download this one. And so I'll call this one rel freak histogram 20 because it has a class width of 20. And hit OK. Save that. And now I've made. Uh, 
a frequency histogram and a relative frequency histogram with a class width of 5, and a frequency histogram and a relative frequency histogram with a class width of 20. All right, and you can play around with a lot of the options, change the labels, change the class width. You could use a class width of 10 or a class width of 15 or whatever you want, and you'll see the, the shape of the histogram will change. You'll see what it looks like looks a little bit different. So play around, change that class width up. Again, you can always open additional ones, so I can open another one here, histogram, and maybe I could start it if I wanted to at 660 and make it every uh, every 15 or something like that and see play around with it and you'll get slightly different looking histograms each time and the idea is that it's sort of an art form to decide those values the the lower class limit limit and the class width to see what kind of shape you get that it, it all depends on what kind of story you're trying to tell with your histogram all right Good luck and have fun with this.